Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is giving me another Yu-Gi-Oh! card review slash discussion type video, and this time it is going to be on a new Synchro monster that has been spoiled for release in the OCG's 20th anniversary pack release, denoting the 20th anniversary of the Yu-Gi-Oh! IP existing, I guess. I'm not sure if it includes just the game itself existing, if it includes the show, I don't know. I'm just assuming it's the entirety of the IP, the, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! itself branding existing. But regardless, that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're talking about the card in question here, at least I'd assume so. And that card is Cosmic Blazer Dragon. Now, this is another Stardust, like, Shooting Quasar equivalent. Whereas we already have Shooting Quasar Dragon and we have Stardust Cipher Spark Dragon, which are two, you know, ultimate boss monsters of the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds era, both the 5Ds manga and the 5Ds anime. Now, this is a card that kind of shares that throne with those two cards, although it's a card that was never seen in the show or the manga. This is a card that was mentioned very, very offhandedly in the show of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds as Yusei's ultimate, you know, boss monster of, you know, him achieving his highest summoning capability possible, his highest Excel Synchro, whatever. But ultimately, because the future was changed because of, you know, the the events that took place in the second arc, the second half of 5Ds, Yusei basically had shooting Quasar Dragon instead because he basically bypassed the summoning energy, I guess I can say, in quotations, the quote-unquote summoning energies, and performed a more powerful summoning method informed shooting Quasar Dragon instead. But ultimately, this card basically shares that sort of hierarchy, that throne mantelpiece of this is the end game of the Synchro Era. This is one of the ultimate boss monsters of the Synchro Era of Yu-Gi-Oh! And all four well and told, it's actually just a really, really good card. Now, this card is a wind-attributed dragon synchro effect monster. It is level 12 with 4,000 attack and 4,000 defense, and the materials for summoning it are much like Quasar and start a Sivir Spark Dragon, one tuner synchro monster plus two or more non-tuner synchro monsters. So it requires three synchro materials, and all of them have to be synchro cards, a synchro tuner as well as two or more at least non-tuner synchro monsters. And its effect is actually very... Th I guess the word I could use is thorough. This card is one of the most thorough cards I've ever seen. It is must be synchro summoned and cannot be special summoned by other ways. During either player's turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can banish this card until the end phase, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. During either player's turn, if your opponent would summon a monster or monsters, you can banish this card until the end phase, negate the summon, and if you do, destroy that monster or monsters. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can banish this card until the end phase, negate the attack, then end the battle phase. This is a quick effect. Now, whoa, that is a very thorough effect, like I said previously. The best word I can use to describe this is thorough. This card negates basically everything and action in the game except for a kaiju, so please don't get kaijued. The amount of work you'd have to invest into putting this thing on the board is already monumental enough. But ultimately, I believe this card on paper is at least a little bit stronger than shooting Quasar. Now, Quasar has a different sort of allure to it in terms of what makes it good. It gets to attack multiple times, being 4,000, so it's a game ender in that right. And it negates a card and stays on the board once per turn. But then if it leaves the field, so if it does get something like Kaiju or something like that, you are going to be able to summon a shooting Star Dragon from your extra deck which is a little bit of a fallback plan that is, you know, a nice little bit of, you know, reliable uh, reliability. Reliabi uh, reliability in your game plan, if I can speak correctly and not trip over my own tongue with my diction. But, this card ultimately just seems to have a more well-rounded effect in terms of what it negates. It negates much more than shooting Quasar Dragon does. It negates literally every action in the game. It negates card or effect activations, so spell card, trap card, monster effect activations, or the physical card activation itself, so that's good. Basically, your opponent cannot activate any effect without this card having a window to negate it, and then this card is a Thunder King-like monster where you can negate summons. Now, it can negate any summon. It can negate a normal summon, a tribute summon, a pendulum summon, a synchro summon, an exceed summon. It can negate all of these cards. It can negate every summon in the game because if your opponent was going to ritual or fusion summon, 
they would just be activating a fusion spell or a ritual spell, which could be negated by this card's first effect. So, like I said, very thorough. <laughs> but if that wasn't enough, if your opponent somehow does have something on board that they're trying to attack with, you can banish this card until the end phase to negate the attack and end the battle phase. Whoa! Like, this is really insane. Like, this card is absolutely bonkers in terms of what its effect actually does. Like I said, it is very thorough. And all of these effects are quick effects. Like, there are three effects that get to respond to any sort of activation requirement or during your opponent's turn. Like, they just activate. It's really, really good and really also frightening. But like I said, Kaijus are an out to this card, and it's a much more clear-cut out than it is to something like Shooting Quasar Dragon, where if you Kaiju it, I'm pretty sure they get the Shooting Star Dragon. I may just be mistaken on my uh, wording with Quasar. I'm not sure if that card misses timing or not to summon Shooting Star. So I need to uh, double-check that at some point. But going with my current thought process, I think you might still get the Shooting Star if they... Uh, if they kaiju it because it's tributing to special summon. I don't know. I, I, I haven't read Quasar in a long time. So I'm not sure of its wording of its last effect. But assuming that you do get the shooting star if you get if you get kaijued. Then that means that card is a lot more, you know, just safe in this format. But assuming you don't get kaijued, this card is so much better than Quasar. Even though it does remove itself from the board. That's kind of a big asset in itself. Because you're banishing it from the field so it's safe from any remove or anything like that. Now, it's not going to be a body that's defending you like Quasar would be, but you get to negate so many other things that it actually just seems like it's worth it. Now, one of the key things that you need to realize about this card is that it banishes itself until the end phase. It does not summon itself. It banishes itself and then returns to the field. So, if you summon this card without properly synchro summoning it, then you are going to still be able to replace it on the board because it's not trying to resummon itself, so therefore it did not have to be summoned properly the first way. Now, this card's first line of text says must be synchro summoned, it cannot be special summoned by other ways. However, there is a card in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! that makes it really easy to summon this card, a lot easier at least than it is to summon it through its normal method and investment, and that is Limit Overdrive. That card is a uh, is a card that exists and that card shuffles synchro monsters back into your extra deck and then summons this card without properly synchro summoning it but limit overdrive says ignoring summoning conditions the most ignorant phrase in Yu-Gi-Oh the most absolutely obnoxious phrase in a Yu-Gi-Oh card is ignoring its summoning conditions but you're able to do that and you're able to summon this card without synchro summoning it properly but because of the way its effect is worded you are able to continually banish it and replace it on the board because it works just like Farfa. It is just returning it to the field. It is not resummoning itself. So, you can bypass its regular Synchro Summon with a card like Limit Overdrive, and then you're able to just keep banishing it and doing things with it, and ultimately, hopefully winning the game with it because it is an ultimate boss monster of the Synchro era, as I already touched on previously. But I want to know what you guys think about this card. I think this card is really cool, and like I said, I believe its effect is incredibly thorough. It is such a well-rounded effect in terms of this is the end game. This is a synchro monster that negates every single card or action in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Except for cards like Kaijus and Lava Golem. And that's absolutely ridiculous to me. But also somewhat like satisfying because I'm one of those people that really liked Synchro Era and I wasn't that big a fan of Xyz Era. Although I do really like the mechanics equally basically I was just much more a fan of synchros the concept of it it just seemed more creative as a mechanic and that's something that I just really like like I like synchro mechanic like based things a lot more than exceeds mechanic based things and the fact that we have a synchro that literally negates every action in the game basically is is kind of like the the ultimate like haha we got there moment we got there guys and that's that's just kind of the way that I'm thinking feeling when I uh, when I look at this card and as well as its artwork is absolutely like amazing it looks very very like cinematic in its artwork but anyway I wanna know what you guys think about this card as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are again in the comments down below and if you like this video definitely be sure to like and subscribe it helps me out a ton it helps the channel and community within it grow all that sort of nonsense. Check out links on screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might like. There's a thousand plus videos over there, so if you can't find something that you also like, I would be very, very surprised. But as I already said, thanks for watching. Thank you for your time as usual, and take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.